What the fuck is that? The Last of Us, behind the scenes and funny moments. Ladies and gentlemen, The Last of Us is here to break all the records and be crowned the king of Canadian television. The statistic from Variety showed that after the first and second episodes, there are a total of 21.3 million viewers combined, and it predicts to record a significant increase, gradually reach to the top-rated HBO series video game, Adaptation. And the best part? The cast has been having an absolute blast filming the epic tale. We see Pedro Pascal in a whole new light. This time around, chasing the bad guys is no longer Pedro's mission, but our beloved Javier Pena from Narcos is the one doing it. Hold on to your horses or dragons if you're a Game of Thrones fan, because now the one and only Pedro Pascal, aka The Mandalorian, is now playing Joel in The Last of Us. Joel, a former happy-go-lucky guy, was left a shell of his former self after a devastating loss during the outbreak of the fungi apocalypse. So here's the deal. Joel has a pretty big job on his hands in this movie. He's got to get out of the super strict quarantine zone and sneak a young girl named Ellie across the whole United States to a secret medical facility run by a rebel group called the Fireflies. Joel is a broken man. He's a father who has experienced loss. I don't save Sarah's life, which is Joel's daughter, which is the event that shapes the character for the rest of his life. It's really a big surprise that Pedro Pascal had never even played the game before, but he was super intrigued to work with Craig Mason after watching Chernobyl. And he was even more pumped about the role after he talked to his sister on the phone and his nephew overheard. They were huge fans of the game and basically begged him to get the job. And Pedro is not the only Game of Thrones star here. Bella Ramsey also joins in the thrill, and this time she's not playing the head of House Mormont. Instead, she's taking on the role of Ellie, a 14-year-old girl, who's just as surprised as everyone else when she realizes she's immune to the Cordyceps brain infection. Could she be the key to finding the cure and saving the world? Well, stay tuned and enjoy nine episodes of the show. The answer will be revealed soon. Even though this show sounds intense and serious, don't worry, Pedro Pascal and Bella Ramsey know how to have a good time on set. They're bringing the laughs and making the most of every moment. Contagious giggle uh -huh. situation got to the point where it was so extreme. Like the crew was ready to kill us. It just made us laugh even more. It's so funny seeing people suffer. <laughs> From the moment the first episode of The Last of Us aired, it was clear that Bella Ramsey was fully immersed in the character of Ellie. Her performance was simply breathtaking. As the creator, Neil Druckmann, told The Hollywood Reporter, the actress playing Ellie needed to be tough, vulnerable, wise beyond her years, and capable of violence all at once. Apparently, there were loads of actors in the running for the role when the idea of the adaptation was first floated. Names like Maisie Williams from The Game of Thrones and Caitlin Dever from Booksmart were at the top of the list. But unfortunately, by the time the HBO adaptation got underway, Maisie was too old for the part, and the problem was for Dever as well. So the casting process had to be organized all over again, and that's when Druckmann met Bella. After her audition, Druckmann said, Bella felt so real, it was like watching Ellie come to life. It didn't feel like watching an actor. And here's the crazy part, Bella had never played the game or even knew Ellie's character before she auditioned. If I ever need to make a phone call that's like important, I do an American accent. It's not an exaggeration to say that she was born for this role, and Bella absolutely killed it as Ellie. But before she could bring the character to life, she had to master the American accent in a unique way. And yeah, that American accent by cursing, essentially. And it was worth it because let's face it, Ellie's got a potty mouth, but Bella's got even bigger plans for the accent. And who would have thought that Bella almost declined the part? However, her reason was simple and humble. She was afraid of being thrust into the spotlight too quickly. The Last of Us is a brilliant show, but turning a video game into a TV show is no easy task. When you're adapting something like a video game, changes have to be done smartly. We are telling more. There is so much in between. And even Neil Druckmann wasn't thrilled about the idea at first. But thankfully, Neil Druckmann and the cast were up to the challenge. And speaking of challenges, Nico Parker's portrayal of Sarah Miller's Joel's daughter was a test of Druckmann's creative abilities. He had to carefully craft the story to seamlessly connect Sarah's scenes with the events of the game. Craig also explains further. It was important for us to present the audience with a Sarah that we felt we could follow for the rest of the series. 
She's almost the protagonist until disaster strikes. Pedro Pascal had a blast shooting the truck ride scene, describing it as one of his most exciting moments. He says, we got to pretend the whole town of Fort McLeod was our set. It was amazing. We had a camera in the car, driving through a real town with people coming out of a movie theater, cars almost hitting us, and mobs of infected chasing us. It was the best make-believe experience ever. Dad? For the scene, Nico Parker was in the back with cinematographer Casina Sarita and was ready to capture all the action with her camera and helmet. The car gets hit and Joel has to carry Sarah as they're chased by infected. And just when you thought it couldn't get wilder, a plane crashes right on top of the town. Even the directors, Mazin and Druckmann, had a blast shooting this scene. Mazin recalls how they ran around the set at night, putting garbage in place, shouting out directions on where to spray blood and other special effects. The scene was shot in Calgary in July when the sun was only out for five hours, from 11.30 p.m. to 4.30 a.m., so they had to work fast. Nico Parker was key to the show's direction and Joel's transformation. Nico Parker, my original daughter, my Sarah, she is the, the person that I live for. Without her, I don't have purpose. Next, we get to meet Merle Drandage, who also played Marlene in the original game. She discussed growing into playing the role again. My name is Marlene. I'm the leader of the Fireflies in the Boston QZ. While she was very enthusiastic about taking up the role, she wasn't so sure and had some doubts. Listening to Neil Druckmann explain the difference between the game and the show even helps us to appreciate further how much work was put into the production. Craig Mazin goes further to describe how each character for the show had to be developed so that it is quite distinct from the game while not losing the essence of the story the game provided. We would appreciate the action moments more if they were each unique, separate and apart from each other, each one of them impacting the story directly in a very clear way. And clearly, while playing in games, the characters could get healed, and this wasn't the same case in movies, Marzen points out. And healing doesn't work quite that way on, on television, it's just we can't crouch, bandage, and be fine. So violence has a different impact. Smaller bits of violence do a lot more damage, and the damage lasts much, much longer or permanently. Another task that the producers had to figure out was how to create outstanding features between numerous zombie movies out there. And at the start of the movie, we are introduced to the clicker. It jumps right in our faces, and clearly, this was the plan of the directors to give you an instant jump. And while Pedro Pascal thought the clickers were gross, You were very grossed out by them. I, I was grossed out. Bella insisted that they were beautiful in some ways. I found them sort of beautiful. They were beautiful. In her views. Designing the clickers was even more interesting. Eric Pangolinen, the art director, explains the whole process. Scary, right? Now it's time to give some applause for the incredible and outstanding performance from the leading actors in the show. Pedro Pascal. I mean, he is totally a badass boss who shares interesting stories behind the scenes for you guys. In regards to the two characters he plays, Mandalorian and Joel, he was able to swing a deal with the Mandalorian producers to be able to work with a rival company, Disney Plus and HBO. Also in the casting process, even though Craig Mason was a bit hesitant to first bring Pedro on board because of the similarities between Joel and his character in The Mandalorian, he still went for it, and thank goodness he did. Pedro's performance is just as amazing as always, making us love him even more in this show. And let's talk about the dynamic duo of Pedro and Bella. Their partnership is pure magic and it shows in their interviews when they serve up jokes and good vibes like it's nobody's business. If you haven't already, be sure to check out our latest video to see here. Now let's talk about the HBO series. Did they knock it out of the park with the character and visual recreation from the game? We want to know your thoughts, so leave us a comment and spill the tea. That's the end of today's video. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe below. Goodbye and see you soon. Try to tell myself I'm